Unholy is a new horror film from Sony Screen Gems. It is produced by Sam Raimi and it is directed by Evan Spiliotopoulos. This is his feature directorial debut after being a writer for so long. This is based off of a novel, in which case the story is about a man played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who is a reporter. He's very washed up, though. He's trying desperately to find an exciting story to spice up his career again. And then all of a sudden, he gets to this very small town where a teenager named Alice, who is deaf, all of a sudden starts talking again and she can hear everyone again and she's speaking the words of the Virgin Mary and she's performing miracles and it seems like this is really legit, right? This is totally, totally real. And as this gets more press and more coverage and Jeffrey Dean Morgan finally has a story to report on, things start to get a little darker and it's the perfect horror film for the Easter holiday. Is it? Well, let's get into it. Uh, I was actually pretty interested in this movie. Uh, I know that produced by Sam Raimi doesn't mean a whole lot other than he was at least interested in the project. It's not like he's making it. He's just maybe giving them money or maybe he found it after the fact and is getting it released. So that doesn't really matter. I know that this is not something that he personally made. But Evan Spiliotopoulos, I was interested in this because this is definitely a new direction for his career, like directing a movie for one and having it be a horror film. Previously, he's done a lot of stuff writing-wise. Uh, either it's uh, straight to DVD Disney stuff, or he wrote the script for Hercules, or The Huntsman Winter's War, or has the story by credit for Charlie's Angels 2019. So, needless to say, I'm not the biggest fan of any of those, um, but surely since this is something that he is obviously passionate about, if he is going to write and direct the adaptation of this book, hopefully this is something that really means a lot to him, you know, and hopefully he's able to make a really cool horror film, because the trailer definitely piqued my interest. It, it looked pretty cool from that. Um, well, it turns out it was lying to me. Every single scare scene in this movie has a good idea. There's a good idea attached to what they're trying to do to scare the audience. In fact, the plot of the movie, it's generally, it's a good premise. And you, you see how they're trying to develop the characters in certain parts, and you're like, that's a good idea right there. That's, that's a good idea that you can expound upon and actually further flesh out. But every single scare scene in this movie is ruined either by a bad visual effect or bad editing. There's a lot of awful jump scares in this that are just jumps for the sake of jumps. There's nothing clever about that. And when it comes to the visual effects, there's some parts where the um, Virgin Mary shows up and it looks pretty good because there's a sense of me that's like, that's practical. That's got to be like makeup and, a, and a, a little mask. Like, that's that's cool. That's cool what you're doing with that. But then every other shot, it seems like, is just a bad visual effect or bad editing when they're doing stuff. Like the typical, like, ghost arthritis thing where the bones are cracking and moving like that. It's like, we've seen this to death so many times. And you guys are acting like it's fresh or that it's really exciting. I feel like in the right context it could be, but even the way it's edited here, it's so lame. The opening of the movie really set the tone because it's something that is a good idea, but then I was taken out of it because of a really bad sound effect and you're seeing someone do something that did not match the sound effect even. That's, And it was at that point where I started to chuckle and it set the tone for the rest of the movie that there's going to be plenty of moments where they want you to take it seriously. This is serious. But instead I started chuckling and other members of the audience were chuckling too. Not because it's like a so bad that it, it's so funny, bad kind of movie. I was really only laughing because of how fucking stupid it was. Like, I, I was constantly kind of whispering under my breath, are you fucking kidding me? Despite the premise actually having my interest, in fact, I'm honestly interested in reading the actual book to see if it lines up well with this movie or if the, this movie just went in a completely different direction. I wouldn't be surprised because at some point near the end, like, they, they do something, they clearly state, this is happening because of this, and I'm like, oh, that's, a, that's kind of a downer way to end this, but, well, they gotta do what they gotta do. But then something gets reversed, and they act like this is a happy ending, nothing is going wrong here, but constantly I was thinking, but what about, none of you are concerned about this, but you just said this directly ties, but this is reversed, so this should be reversed. What? It's hard to say without spoiling, but it's definitely like a sequel bait kind of ending that literally, they try to make you think like, oh, this is a surprise. You're gonna be surprised when you see this, and it's like, no. Uh, no, it's not surprising. In fact, it's stupid because none of these other characters are able to connect the dots like I am. Like, Jesus! But speaking of the narrative, I did want to address that it seems like they got the main character's arc confused in some places, or they tried to go for, like, two different things at once. 
uh, because Jeffrey Dean Morgan is the main character. And unfortunately, I have to say his performance, it, it left a lot to be desired. He was just very kind of boring. He's trying to play a washed up, depressed, alcoholic reporter, but it just seemed like he did not give a fuck to be in the movie. You know, like there's no part of his performance that convinced me that he was a uh, former reporter. There's no scene where he's writing. Like there's, there's only scenes of him taking pictures, recording some interview segments, but there's no him like actually typing away stuff or like deleting parts of a draft like oh that's really bad we gotta fix that or something like that it's just a lot of like i am a reporter here's my camera click next scene <laughs> and there's like this whole like other subplot with like this woman who works at like um his former job she's like his boss and she's like we want you back uh and he's like i want some new terms before i come back i'm working an angle and there, she's like okay we'll get back to you on that and then five to six scenes later she comes back but he's like i'm we're in the climax of the movie i've learned a lesson or something i'm gonna have to decline your call and then she's like well that's kind of weird we don't really have an established relationship in this movie other than vague details expositioned at us and i've barely been in this movie enough to make an impact i'm gonna show up for the climax to be there to see what's going on and to help in an inconsequential kind of way. I'm important. <laughs> so I didn't buy that angle at all in this story, but also it seemed like they were getting their arcs confused because is it he shouldn't be a uh, liar in the media? He's part of that uh, crooked, lion, fake news media and he shouldn't do that? Or is the arc of the movie he should have more faith? in God, specifically. And it seems like neither of them really worked at the end, because it doesn't seem like they went in enough to really pull that angle of him being a liar, you know, even when he's confessing his sins, his prior sins, and trying to work an angle to save the day. It's just so unconvincing on his part, I, I didn't feel anything coming from him. And just speaking narratively in the movie, it seemed like it wasn't really working, but they're acting like this is working, this is totally cool. He's really learning something, even though the aftermath of the movie, you know, it's cut really short and you don't really see a lot of the aftermath of all of this, which is another weakness to the ending earlier. But also, when it comes to, like, his faith, it's not like they really worked that into the plot that much, you know? He, he definitely says at one point, I'm religious, I grew up religious, but now I'm kind of not anymore. And that's it. That's all you get. He expositioned it, and that's it. And throughout the rest of the movie, there's no parts where he's like... I, I don't know, I don't believe in any of this kooky shit, I don't know, this is all pretty, this is all pretty wacko to me. So without spoiling anything, I guess, if you really care, there, there's this part of it near the ending where that comes back into play, I guess, and it's supposed to be like, you really learned something, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, having faith, and it's like, I don't think this is as strong as you really want it to be, and as an atheist audience member, I'm not convinced. <laughs> I should be relating to Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He is the atheist in the movie who knows a little bit of about religion because of like childhood and unfortunately I am not convinced. You failed. There are characters that I do like in this movie. There's a Monsignor who is a skeptic. He's like, his role is to literally prove that this is fake and that it's not happening. And it's like, okay, I, I like that angle of it. I like seeing him uh, in this movie for as little time as he was there. Like it was the one thing I found kind of interesting in this. And the girl who plays Alice in this movie is really good. She's got a lot of opportunities to spread her wings and show what she's got. And she's really great in this. She, she's got a lot of great speeches and monologues. She's great. She's like the one actress in this I would say is like really, really trying. But when the plot starts to kick in, the only person you vaguely kind of know is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. When they introduce Alice, she's already doing some creepy shit. And then they get her back to her normal family or her father, the, the father of the church who is her caretaker but not her actual father, I think. I think that's what they said. Uh, and you don't know anything about their dynamic. Is she even religious before the movie starts? Or is she kind of like Jeffrey Dean Morgan? Like, I'm kind of separating a bit from my faith, but oh, Mary's inside of me now? Or is she very devout? Does she have a good relationship with this man? Or, or are they kind of separate? What's the dynamic here? How, how is her school life? Does she even go to school? What's, what's this town like? Let's flesh out the town a bit more. Who is this doctor that comes in who is now going to be Jeffrey Dean Morgan's love interest because she is woman that looks close to his age? So that, pair him up, pair him up. Even if you don't really buy why she likes him at all because he acts bored as hell throughout the entire movie. Just, just have him in love, Put, make him in love. This movie does such a bad job of properly introducing the stakes in the beginning and introducing you to the characters. So as it goes on, you're just watching these people and you're like, I only really care about like, one or two of you. And even then you're not focusing on them enough. You're focusing on a character that I, I, 
bored with. I don't want to watch this man. The town, I think, should have been more of a character in this movie. And I understand that I read on Wikipedia that they had problems with the production because of COVID-19 when they had to come back to shoot the rest of the movie. Uh, they were under certain guidelines that they couldn't have more than like uh, a certain number of extras. So they had to reuse a lot of them and keep it kind of limited. And it's like, okay, I can, I can see that. And it's not like the crowd work is like specifically what's wrong with it. It just seems like this place is becoming like more of a touristy kind of area, a Catholic touristy kind of area because they're establishing a shrine here. Um, but you don't really see how that affects this small town that might as well be a ghost town at one point because he goes to like a cafe and he's like, is it always busy in here? And it's empty and the waitress goes, this is rush hour, Boom, but then later in the movie, like, every seat is filled with people, but not in a way that's like, oh man, this town is, like, really bopping now, just in a way that it's like, oh, this feels like a Saturday morning, like a, like a Saturday morning brunch kind of vibe, like, pretty normal for a small town, I think. They do nothing else to really uh, show that this town is growing or fleshing out, uh, the people are changing or something like that. And then Carrie Elways, man, I, I like the idea of the, the church building a shrine in a, in a false area, like, oh yeah, we did it because there's genuine miracles, but they're done by, like, satanic work or whatever. That's a, that's a, that's a fine idea. But Carrie Elways, I, I'm not usually a big critic of, like, his accent, because I know he's British and he's always kind of cast in like American roles so he has to do that voice and it's like I can overlook it he's usually pretty good at what he does but in this one it seemed like there are certain ways he ends his sentences certain enunciations on words where I was like that that is weird how you said that but more than that his character in this is like is he supposed to be kind of like a bad guy or is he just like a normal religious man because at one point it seems like he's intentionally covering up a story that uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan should have known, everyone should know about, and he knows that it's bad. But in that scene, he's acting kind of chill about it, like, what? I don't understand the problem. Then later in the movie, he's like, if you see this man, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, get him out of here, I don't want him here. And then when he does show up later, he's just like, I'll let him through. Let's just hear what he has to say. And then when Jeffrey Dean Morgan comes up on the stage, he's like, whoa, this is crazy. What are you doing this for? It's like, what are you doing, man? What is this? There are things that I did genuinely like about this movie, or that at least piqued my interest, like the actress who played Alice, the Monsignor skeptic. Uh, there's good ideas for scare scenes. I could see them working in a different film, in a, in, with a different filmmaker attached. There's certain ways they could have gone about exploring themes in this plot, where I was like, that that could have worked really well if you gave this to someone like Ari Aster or literally anyone else who has made a great horror movie before. There's a, a, a decent enough eerie score in this that kind of, you know, caught my my attention. Like, oh, that's that sounds pretty eerie. Everything else about this movie, though, bad visual effects, bad editing, bad characterization, bad acting and dialogue at times. There's plenty of moments where there, there's bad ADR, one involving a little boy. Um, I, I won't spoil it, but when it happened, he, like, spoke his ADR lines. I was cackling. It was hilarious. This movie could have been very interesting. The premise is definitely there to create something really, really interesting and really spectacular for a horror movie. But unfortunately, and I hate to say this because I know this is the guy's directorial debut, but I think they just got the wrong person to do it. Maybe he was passionate about it, but clear, like, I feel like you could have read the script before the movie was even made, before anything was shot. You could have read the script and been like, Okay, this needs work. This ending, maybe we, we should change that. It seems like some of this dialogue is kind of repetitive. It seems like the, this character said this like two minutes ago in a different scene and they're saying it again. What is going on here? So I, I'm not sure why the script went forward at all other than Sam Raimi liked it, but I'm not sure why. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it could have been so much better, and unfortunately it just came across as a generic run-of-the-mill horror movie that probably should have come out back in January as opposed to Easter. I'm gonna give The Unholy a C-. minus. There are things that I did like about it that I want to be fair with, but there's just so much here that was just so bad and just so uninteresting. It's it's not worth your time, even if you're looking for something that's like, oh, I just want to see any horror movie. I want to see something somewhat in line for the Easter holiday. Just Just don't. Don't even bother. But if you've seen The Unholy, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.